Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking 3D depth effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to have here is we need to have some generated art. So I'm just using Adobe Firefly here and I'm using the version two of Adobe Firefly. Um, I've just searched for a post-apocalyptic uh, landscape and this is what it's generated for me. It looks pretty cool. The only thing I made sure to for it to have is the 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is important for landscape. And once you've got that, that, then all you have to do is just press download. Now, if you're using Mid Journey or anything else, it's the same process. Just take that generated image to Zoe Depth and then we'll add the depth map. So here we are in Zoe Depth and you can find the link in the description below, but it's at huggingface.co. All I did is I went to image to 3D. I uploaded our image from Firefly here and I made sure that I ticked this uh, box over here, keep occlusion edges on. If you don't do that, when you generate it, you will see a lot of black, um, you know, kind of gaps and stuff like that. But, you know, honestly, like it's done a pretty cool job. You know, it's not gonna be perfect, but for what we are going to use it for, I think it will be great. So all you need to do is just download that and then we'll take that back into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new composition. I'm just gonna uh, go with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS and a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press okay. Once you got that, we need to import the file that Zoe Depth created. So I'm just gonna right click and go file import. And now if you are on the 2024 version of Adobe After Effects, you can import those GLB files natively. So that is super cool. So all I did is I just dragged it to my timeline and now you can't really see anything over here, but if you open up the transform settings, go to the Y rotation and change that value to 180, now the image pops back in. So the next thing that we need to have here is we need to have a camera. So I'm just gonna run with a 35 mil camera. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the camera settings, go into transform, and I'm just gonna go to the position and reset that back to zero. All right, so now the image takes up the whole screen. I'm just gonna increase the point of interest to, or well, I'm just gonna add 500 in there. So that means that when we zoom in, now it's not gonna go all crazy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna animate that. So I'm gonna click on that stopwatch for position. I'm gonna move to the end of that uh, timeline and I'm just gonna increase it to let's say 499. And now if you've done that correctly, now you will have that movement. Now, obviously if you wanna change any of those things, for example, all you have to do is just press uh, C and you can move this stuff around and that will also animate as well. So for example, you know, if you wanted to follow a different path or anything like that, uh, you can. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna have a small zoom in effect just like that. And I think that's looking pretty cool. So now once we have that, now we just need to dress it up a little bit. So the first thing that I'm gonna add here is I'm just gonna add some particles and some dust and some lighting. Now I am gonna cheat a bit because I downloaded this pack from Rocket Stock and I'm gonna be using a few elements from that, but it's very easy. You can just download uh, the link from the description and add it into your composition as well. So now I've got these two assets, this big dust beam and this swirly dust and I'm just gonna put it into our composition and you can see that it's probably just a bit too big. So I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit and then obviously you can't see the image behind it. So I'm just gonna click that toggle switches mode and then just change it to screen. And so now we have those bits of light beams that are coming out. I think that's looking pretty cool, but we are going to change a few things uh, with this. So I'm just gonna press T for opacity, maybe drop that down to about maybe 60 or even 65%. And then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast effect on here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of pulsate that. So to do that, what we need to do is we just need to hold option, click that stopwatch and we can write wiggle. Uh, we only want a small amount of wiggle. So we're just gonna go 0.4 and then we'll say comma, maybe we'll say 
80, something like that. So now you'll see we've just added, you know, like a little bit more movement to that composition. So we're gonna do the same thing again with the next asset, so swirly dust. So I'm just gonna put that um, underneath that big dust beam i'm gonna hit s for scale and i'm just going to scale it until it kind of fits right then i'm just going to change the blend mode to screen and then i'm just going to press t for opacity and drop that to about 65 percent as well and so what we can do is we can go to our big dust beam and we can copy that uh, brightness and contrast and then paste it into the swirly dust as well so now we have a bit of of swirl with the dust and the light beam going and that's looking pretty cool and we're also going to add some fog in here as well so to do that what we need to do is we need to create a new solid we're just going to call that fog and then what we are going to do is we're going to search for an effect called fractal noise we're going to bump up this contrast to about 150 and then what we are going to do is we're just going to animate the evolution so i'm going to hit that stopwatch and then i'm going to move to the end of the composition let's set that to one and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same in transform go to offset turbulence hit that stopwatch then get to the end and what we're going to do is we're just going to increase this maybe a little bit something like that and we're also going to move it over just like that and so now you've got this kind of diagonal uh, pattern for this fog to you know take place and then what we need to do is we just need to go and change that blend mode to screen as well and we just need to drop the opacity to maybe something like 10% and so now we've got a bit of fog, you know, it zooms in. And if you want to change the zoom in, like you don't want it to go uh, that far, then all you have to do is just go to this um, place over here. Maybe we'll bring it down to like, let's say 350, something like that. So now it moves in a touch slower. So I think that's looking pretty cool, but we can make it look a little bit better. So now the final asset that we're going to add is just a little bit of lightning. So what I did is I just downloaded this clip too and I'm just going to put it into our composition. I'm just going to scale it back down a little bit, maybe, maybe something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press T for opacity, just drag it down a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a very simple mask just around you know this kind of area over here and then i'm just going to close the mask off and then i'm going to press f for feather and i'm just going to feather that out to let's say something like 100 or even 120 and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change the blend mode to overlay and so now when this plays back there's going to be a little bit of a lightning storm in there and i think that looks uh pretty cool so there, there's the lightning storm. I think that looks nice. And the final thing that we can add is just an adjustment layer. So if we go right click new adjustment layer and we add some curves in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a simple S bend, maybe something like that. So depending on how much you wanna drop it, um, maybe something like that, just a little bit darker. And then the final effect that we can put in here is just a noise layer. So I just made a new adjustment layer and I'm just gonna bump this noise up to, let's say around 8%, something like that. And that's pretty much it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching your short tutorial on how to create depth maps and how to use Zoe Depth. It's pretty cool. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.